imagine you could choose to be a vegetable. What kind of vegetable would you choose to be? A pumpkin? Or a corn? Or a bean? If I happened to be a vegetable, I would be a bean plant. Why? Because I'm hardworking and fast, just like a bean plant that produces lots of beans in a very short time. Pumpkin, corn, and bean have a lot in common with sustainable success of people and organizations. And we can learn so much from nature. In my bean life, 29 years ago, I worked in an advertising agency, 10 to 12 hours minimum every day. My boss's only concern was to be the division with the best turnover. So perhaps, without really being aware, he put a lot of pressure on us. And we had those terrible Monday morning meetings where the whole team gathered and we went through all the projects and there was a very uncomfortable tension in energy in the room. And we were always glad when the meeting was over. I was only 25 and exhausted. And there was a voice inside of me that had already quit the job. I observed that being in different jobs later, leaders want to be successful, and that, of course, is defined by profit. Nothing wrong with that, because this is in the DNA of a company. But that can lead to unhealthy competition between leaders and between teams, of who contributes more to the success. And if on top of that, leaders put a lot of pressure and have a lack of good leadership skills, that leads to exhaustion, inner resignation, and disengaged people. So what if success would be possible without pressure? What if people are self-motivated, passionate, and love working together? What if teams would cooperate instead of compete and leaders would go with the best possible solution? A culture where people listen to each other's needs and appreciate their differences. To put it in a nutshell, a culture where people can unfold their whole potential, and success would be sustainable. And by the way, such an organization would be a super attractive employer. 20 years ago, I changed my job, and I became a consultant for organizations and a coach for leaders. And now, today, I'm trying to close this gap between what is and what could be. And I found the best answers when I had at least expected it on a trip with my husband in nature. That trip was 2016, and we went with a 56-year-old Mercedes-Benz from Hamburg to Shanghai. And we traveled over seven countries, mainly rural areas, but we had passed many, many cornfields. Sometimes we would drive along one cornfield 30 minutes. It was end of August. It hadn't rained in a long time, and everything was very, very dry. And wherever, the farmers would harvest the corn and prepare the fields with a huge plow. We found ourselves 
wrapped into clouds of dust. And do you know what that was? That dust? Soil. Beautiful, fertile soil up in the air. And on that trip, we became aware of the fact that the, the rising drought and the way we farm destroy our base of living. So when we got back to Hamburg, and a couple of weeks later, we decided we're going to do something about that. And we bought a farm with those young, passionate farmers to save our soil. So I became a part-time farmer. And those young colleagues of mine, they helped me to achieve a deep understanding of how nature works. We grow high-quality vegetables. And our goal is to find a sustainable way of producing food by regenerating the soil, called regenerative farming. And of course, I still have my job as a consultant and as a coach. And my goal there is pretty similar. I help organizations to build a regenerative culture. So those two jobs go great together. There is a fascinating thing about nature and regenerative farming. And that is that nature creates very smart solutions for complex challenges. I love to take my clients out on the vegetable field and encourage them to adapt some of those regenerative principles to their teams and to their organizations. In regenerative farming, our leading principle is a very ancient method called the Three Sisters model. And that is completely different to what you see in conventional agriculture, where you have one vegetable on one field. We grow three different vegetables very close together with three different properties. And each single vegetable enhances and supports the other one in growth. So three different vegetables, three different properties produce better results and are great for each other and great for the soil. So looking to the organization, what can we do with this idea? How can we adapt that to our teams and to our organizations? Is working together. We tend to look for other people's advice who think the same way we think. But doing things like nature, we learned that three different species together produce better results. So, Diversity makes the system more intelligent. So what could you do with that coming home? Very simple. Every one of you has two people that you like in your team or in your organization. So find your two sisters, your corn, your pumpkin, your bean that you feel comfortable with. Yeah, sorry guys, could also be two brothers. And, uh, and best case, they have skills that you don't have or different personalities. The important thing is that they can gift you a different perspective. The second thing you can do is set up a Three Sisters meeting on a regular basis where you can openly present an unsolved problem. And then you use the different aspects, the ideas, and the perspectives as a climbing aid, as a support to come up with a better solution than doing it all by yourself. 
And then third thing, of course, is set up a frame for that meeting. Agree on time and some rules that matter to you and make it a safe space that nothing leaves the room. But there is a precondition for the success with the Three Sisters method. Our vegetable, they need an excellent and living environment to grow. And that living environment in regenerative farming is the soil. If the soil is of high quality, you get excellent products. High quality of soil means a living soil. And a living soil has different layers underneath the surface, not visible to us at first sight. And those layers are full of life, with bugs and worms and insect larves and billions of microorganisms. Everything is connected. They rely on each other. It is a safe space. And every creature feels perfectly fine in its specific layer. Some love to be underneath the surface. Others love to be deeper. So our farm team does a tremendous effort to protect this living system and not to disturb it too much. So no dig is another leading principle in regenerative farming. We don't use a plow because it would take a long time to heal the living system again. So the point is, the booster for growth and for success is underneath the surface. It's invisible. Let's have a look at the organization. Working together, most of the time, happens in meetings. And their people are very good in exchanging arguments and facts and numbers. And although they are very good in doing so, they often leave the meeting unsatisfied. Why that? It has to do with the invisible, with the energy in the room and the emotions. Everyone feels it, no one talks about it. And perhaps you know that feeling of not being heard, not being accepted, not feeling appreciated. That feeling of one against the other. People don't open up. So in consequence, you don't get the full potential of the individual or of the group. Instead, we should create an environment of emotional safety to achieve trust and supportiveness because that will change the energy in the room. And that energy is the main driving force for great output. That energy makes the difference if people stay connected and motivated. And everyone can do that. Everyone can contribute to that. So you want to try when you get home? It's easy. First thing, pay attention to the invisible. Observe the interaction. Did people appreciate each other? Did they listen to each other? Did everyone have enough room to talk? Was it safe enough to admit you didn't understand a thing or you made a mistake? I advise teams when the first practice to get a third person of trust or a coach to accompany them during the first meetings. But then after some practice, you will realize that meetings become super productive and fun again. And if you have created that safe space after some months, Make sure not to turn things upside down all the time. I know we live in times of change. But think carefully before starting the new change process in order not to damage the regenerative culture too much. 
So to sum it up, it's pretty simple. Sustainable success is possible if we do not only focus on profit, the three sisters and the invisible, the emotional safety, that makes the difference. Let's build all together sustainable organizations with a regenerative mindset where people can grow. So if you want to take this one thing home, remember, do things like nature. That's all I have.